ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اما بعد تبسيد قال الامام احمد رحمه الله تعالى والايمان ان المسيح الدجال خارج مكتوب بين عينيه كافر والاحاديث التي جاءت فيه والايمان بان ذلك كائن He said, likewise, from the fundamentals of the Sunnah, from those affairs that differing with Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'a, as regarding or denying is enough by itself to remove a person from the Sunnah, and according to how a person denies it, if a person denies it, juhudan wa takdiban, la ta'awilan, if a person denies it out of flat out rejecting it, and not believing it to be the truth and not only removes them from the fold of the sunnah but removes them from Islam is the belief in the Masih Dajjal that the Masih Dajjal kharij and he will emerge that the Masih Dajjal will emerge the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said there was never a prophet that was sent to any nation before me illa hadhara ummatahu al-masih dajjal except that he warned his nation of the masih dajjal and the, and the nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that there has not been a khalq and another narration of fitna mundu khalaq allahu samawati wal ard a'adham or akbar min fitna al-masih dajjal and there has not been something that has been created since the creation of the heavens and the earth that is a greater trial than the trial of the Masih Dajjal. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to warn the companions about the Masih Dajjal to the extent that they thought that if the that the Masih Dajjal was hiding in the bushes behind them, ready to jump out on them at any moment. As one narration said, the Messenger وسلم, he warned his companions against the Masih Dajjal so much. On one occasion, he saw that it troubled Al Mughir ibn Shu'aba tremendously. And he said, What is troubling you? And he said, You said that he will have, you said that he will have a nahr, and a river of water with him, and that he will have. A mountain of khubs, a mountain of food at a time where there will be no water or food upon the earth. Water will be a scarcity, worship of ma'adum, and it will be nearly unavailable. Palatable drinking water will be nearly unavailable. And the same with food as the Prophet وسلم, he said in another hadith reported by Imam Muslim. <coughs> بين يدي دجال ثلاث سنوات شداد. That before the Masih Dajjal there will be three severe years. In the first year to Umar al Sama, Fatahbisu Thulutha Matriha. The sky will be ordered to withhold a third of its rain. And the earth will be ordered to withhold a third of its vegetation. In the second year, the sky will be ordered to withhold two-thirds of its rain and the earth ordered to withhold two-thirds of its vegetation. In the third year, the sky will withhold its rain in entirety and the earth will withhold its vegetation in entirety. The Prophet Sallallahu was asked that what will cause the people to live at that time? will allow them to live in that time. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, At-Tasbihu 
والتحميد والتحليل والتكبير that they will be given nourishment it is a ma'jiza min karamati awliya illah it is from the supernatural favors of Allah that are miraculous in nature that are given to the allies of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala fi akhir zaman in the end of times that their tasbih of Allah saying subhanallah meaning that Allah is free of defect and imperfection in a time when the people will be tested as regards their sustenance as regards that which is the most important aspect of al-baqa, of survival in the earth, a person's food and drink. A person will make tasbih, showing that they have retained, despite their being tested by Allah, husn al billah. They have retained good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the meaning of a tasbih is what? Subhanallah means that Allah is free of defect and imperfection as regards what? As regards his names, his attributes and his actions. As regards his names, his attributes and his actions. Allah is described with absolute perfection and he is free of every defect and imperfection. And so Allah Ta'ala for having decreed this for mankind as an ibtila for some of them رِفْعَةً لِأَقْدَارِهِمْ to raise their status for some of them and as a tuhra as a purification for some of them and as an uquba for others and as a punishment for others in this time of tremendous calamity they will be saying subhanallah declaring Allah to be free of defect and imperfection not believing that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested them with is something that they do not deserve. And is something that is oppressive from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. For verily Allah la yadlimu mithqala dharrah does not oppress the creation the amount of even an atom of oppression. When Allah, and Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala He is as He said in the Quran وَلَا يُؤَاخِذُ اللَّهُ النَّاسَ بِمَا كَسَبُوا مَا تَرَكَ عَلَى ظَهْرِهَا مِنْ دَابَّةِ وَلَكِنْ يُؤَاخِرُهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّةِ That if Allah was to bring the people to account in this life for that which they have earned, He would not leave a creature alive on the face of the earth. He would withhold everything. He would withhold their air from them their food and their drink from them and he would do away with every creature upon the face of the earth if he was to give them what they deserved if he was to give them what they deserved he would destroy every creature not every human being every creature upon the face of the earth and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he said inna allaha yumsiku as samawati wal arda an tazula وَلَا إِنْ زَالَتَا إِنْ أَمْسَكَهُمَّ مِنْ أَحَدِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ حَلِيمًا غَفُورًا Indeed Allah holds the heavens and the earth from moving from their places. And they will move from their places of hell by anyone other than Allah. تبارك وتعالى ابن قائم رحمه الله تعالى He said, وَفِي هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ إِشْعَارٌ بِأَنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَالْجِبَالِ تَسْتَأْذِنُ رَبَّهَا ليدمر أو لتدمر بني آدم لعظم ما يقع على الأرض. That in this verse is that which brings us the realization that the heavens and the earth and the mountains seek the permission of Allah to destroy the children of Adam, to destroy the entirety of humanity due to the hideousness and tremendousness and horrific nature of that which occurs of kufr and shirk and disobedience upon the face of the earth. And so when Allah tabarak wa ta'ala tests the believer, they have a number of mashahid, a number of things that they observe pertaining the qadr of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala al-mu'lim, that which is painful from the qadr of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. From that is that they realize that they are mahdu abdinillah, mashhadul ubudiyah, 
that they are simply the slave of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and that as regards everything that Allah tests them with that Allah has a haqq of al-ubudiyyah the sarra'i wa dharra he has a right to be worshipped tabarak wa ta'ala and that which is easy for a person in good times and that which is difficult for a person in bad times to the point that Ibn Qayyim he said وَمَنْ لَا يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ إِلَّا فِيمَا يُحِبْ فَإِنَّمَا يَعْبُدُ إِلَّا نَفْسَهِ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَعْبُدُ إِلَّا نَفْسَهِ The one who only worships Allah as regards that which they want and that which is easy for them in the good times and in reality they only worship their self. In reality that person only worships their self. They want to pick and choose when to worship Allah and how to worship Allah and what to do of the religion and what not to do of the religion and what to do and what not to do it فَإِنَّهُ يَعْبُدُ نَفْسَهِ this person only worships herself. And so Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He will test the believers with thalathu sanawat in shidad. And before that, He will test the believers with a tremendous test. As the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr, reported by Imam Ahmed and others authentically from the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayakunu bayni yadaya dajjal. سنوات خدعات يصدق فيها الكاذب ويكذب فيها الصادق ويؤتمن فيها الخائن ويخون فيها الآمين وينطق فيها الرويبضة قيل وما الرويبضة قال الرجل التافه يتكلم في أمر العام he said there will come before the مسيح الدجال years of deception in which the lie will be believed and the truth will be disbelieved and the treacherous will be deemed to be trustworthy and the trustworthy will be deemed to be treacherous and the rawaybi that will speak in that time and the rawaybi that will speak in that time they said to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَمَا الرَّوَيْبِ ذَا who are the rawaybi ذَا he said الرَّجُلُ التَّافِحِ it is the person who is taafi a nobody, a loser, a bum يَتَكَلَّمُ فِي عَمْرِ الْعَامَةِ a person who has nothing of the deen of the dunya, he doesn't have knowledge, he doesn't have authority, and he speaks about those things that only the ulama and the people of authority can speak about. يَتَكَلَّمُ فِي عَمْرِ الْعَامَةِ Sheikh Hamur al-Tawajri, he said this is the fitna of al-Duhayma. Al-Duhayma is the fitna of the blameworthy masses. And the al-Amatul Madhmumun. العامة المضمومون الدحيماء الخوغاء رعاء الناس They are those that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم spoke about in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr when the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم he said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said ذكر الفتن فأكثر في ذكرها and he mentioned the fitna and he spoke about it at length حتى ذكر فتنة الأحلاس فقال قائل وما الأحلاس قال فيه حرب وحرب he said he spoke about the fitna at length and he mentioned fitna fitna to the ahlas fitna to the ahlas they say that the word الحلس and the ahlas and he comes from the word the same word of any that means a saddle I guess it comes in the narration of عمر about the man who and he used to speak to one of the jinn he used to have a hat from the jinn he was a soothsayer, a fortune teller and he was asked about the greatest thing that he ever saw in the time of the uh, at the time that the Prophet some emerged and started proclaiming the message and he said that there was a jinn that used to come to me to me daily and he and he ghaba anni and he was and he, he didn't come for some time and then we heard it scream out, Alam tar al jinn wa iblasaha wa yaasaha min ba'di in kasiha wa luhuqaha bil wa luhuqaha bi aqlasi wa ahlasiha. And he say, Aqlas, and he was the riding animals of the jinn. And he that the jinn were upon their riding animals. From the unseen, they have riding animals. Wa ahlasiha, ahlas, and their saddles. And they were mounting up to travel to the ends of the earth. So the Prophet Sallallahu he described the fitna, fitna to ahlas Fitna to ahlas they say, and he, 
yani ahlas are like saddles. The saddles because the saddle yani is stuck to the back of the animal. And it is pressing against it. And it is lazim. It is lazim. And it is something that is connected to the an to the animal to the animal and you will not get the utility of the animal without it. Meaning it is a fitna that will be like it won't go away. Fihi harabun wa harab. He said, meaning there will be nahabul amwal. Meaning that there will be the plundering of the wealth. The Muslims will be fighting one another, civil strife, civil war amongst one another. As the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith of Uthman, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا رُفِئَ السَّيْفُ فِي هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ لَنْ يُوضَعْ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ that when the sword is raised up amongst his ummah will not be lowered to the day of judgment. Meaning when the Muslims take weapons against, carry weapons or bear arms against one another, they will never stop fighting and killing one another to the Yawm Al-Qiyamah. To the Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ فِتْنَةُ الصَّرَّاءِ دَخَنُهَا مِنْ تَحْتِ قَدَمِ رَجُلٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ بَيْتِ يَزْعُمُ أَنَّهُ مِنِّي وَلَيْسَ مِنِّي إِنَّمَا أُولِيَاءِ الْمُتَّقُونَ He said then there will come a fitna. Yani the fitna of astara, yani of a time of abundance and wealth and so on and so forth, and it will come bellowing like a smoke under the feet of a man from my household, from my family who will claim to be from me, but he is not from me. Indeed, my allies are only the muttaqun. Because al wala wal bara la yakunan illa ala asasi shar'i. And because al wala and bara is only about upon the religion. Al wala wal bara upon other than. At-taqwa and al-iman is called hizbiyya. It's called hizbiyya. Al-wala'u wal-bara upon other than at-taqwa wal-iman is sunnah. Upon as-sabir was sunnah. Upon the way of the believers which is as-salafiyya. And the sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is hizbiyya. And if you have al-wala wal-bara upon anything other than that, upon any other asas, it is hizbiyya. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّمَا أُولِيَاءِ الْمُتَّقُونَ My allies are only the people of taqwa. He said, ثُمَّ يَسْتَلِحُ النَّاسُ عَلَى رَجُلٍ كَوَرْكٍ عَلَى ضِلْعَ He said, and the people, they will appoint to be a ruler over themselves, a man who was like a thigh on top of a torso. A thigh on top of a torso. And if your thigh was on top of your torso, you wouldn't have what? You wouldn't have a leg to stand on. You wouldn't have a leg to stand on. And a person, he doesn't really have any authority like that. He doesn't have any authority like that. Right? And the people don't respect him. Huh? And as the Salat, they say, Your leaders will be a representation of yourselves. It will be a representation of yourselves. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Thumma fitna to Duhayma, La Tadau Ahadan min Hadihi al Umma illa Latamatu Latma, Yusbihu Rajulu, Fiha Mu'minan wa Yumsi Kafiran. He said, Then there will come the fitna of the Duhayma. The fitna of the Duhayma, the blameworthy masses. The Shaykh Hamud al Tawajiri, Rahmatullah Alaihi, he said in his book about the Ashratu Sa'a. He said that perhaps what we see today, any of the inqilabat, any of the mudaharat and inqilabat, wa ma ilayha, any of the protests in the lands of the Muslims, and the overthrowing in the coup d'etats and so on and so forth, so, so forth in the lands of the Muslims, that are destabilizing geopolitically, destabilizing the Muslims and these sorts of affairs, the likes of these things will lead to the fitna to duhayma. The fitna to duhayma. I mean, when the Muslims are fighting against one another, fighting over leadership, fighting over the karasi, thinking that the rectification of the society comes by killing the ruler, and removing the ruler, and deposing the ruler, and voting out the ruler, and involving yourself in the political process. While islah upon the manhaj of the nubuwa, it begins with the qalb of the person, with the heart of the person. And that begins with the tawheed. And that begins with the tawheed. And with the people being upon unity and their approach and their methodology and in their aqidah and in their fundamentals. So the Prophet Wasallam, he said, a man in that time will begin his day as a believer and retire as a disbeliever. He said, 
every time it is said فَإِذَا قِيلَ انْقَضَتْ تَمَادَتْ whenever it is said that the fitna is finally over it will only increase longer it will only increase longer it will not leave a person from this nation except it will strike him a blow it will not leave a person from this nation except it will strike him a blow Meaning it will not leave a household from the Muslims except it will directly affect that household. As Shaykh Muhammad al Imam, he said, perhaps it is the fitna of the satellite dish. And a tawasul al ijtima'i. And the fitna of social networks and so on and so forth that have been used by the disbelievers to orchestrate the takeover of the lands of the Muslims. And by the think tanks in the West and so on and so forth, the people should be very careful. And he, it was Google, right? Just bought WhatsApp for like four billion dollars, huh? Allahu Akbar. Sheikh Mohammed Bazmoun, Hafizullah Taala, he said, when I saw that WhatsApp sold for billions of dollars, I knew that that was a value of the user data of every person in every land who knows what's, what, what WhatsApp is WhatsApp is something that allows you to send international text messages for free he said that was the value of the user data the user data the Sheikh he said some years ago in a lecture he said that they have armies of millions of social scientists that they are sending into the lands of the Muslims to investigate how to take over their lands without sending in standing armies. It's a war of information. Huh? The Prophet wasallam, he said there will be a fitna that will strike the people, that will strike the ummah, it will not leave a person except it will strike him a blow. Except that it will strike him a blow. Every time it is said in Qadat Tamadat, it is over, it will extend longer. A person in that time may begin his day as a believer and retire as a disbeliever. It's a time and he, when the people will be apostating from Islam in large numbers. Apostating from Islam in large numbers. The Prophet وسلم, he said, Hatta Yasir al Nas ila fustatain until the people become one of two camps fustati imani la nifaq fi wa fustati nifaq la iman fi the camp of iman where there is no nifaq and the camp of nifaq where there is no iman and he, things will become so severe that there will be two types of people and he, a person who has iman with no nifaq Iman and no nifaq at all. And a person who has nifaq and no iman at all. And there will be qismu thalith. وَلَيْسَ ثَمَّ قِسْمُ thalith. And he limited the ummah to two groups of people. Because the fitna, fitna exposes people. Fitna exposes people. It shows the true colors of people. It shows the true resolve, the true thabat of the people. You see something come, it is taffy, wallahi. It is something that is light. If you heard about it before it happened, you would say, nobody's that stupid. To go off and gamble their religion behind somebody chasing after the dunya and chasing after the money of the hizbis. Nobody would do that. The thing that happens, it's like, yeah, fulan, it ain't. Where are you going? Come back, Akhi. And next thing you know, they call the Salafis Hizbis. And to Hizbiyun. And to Farriqun al Muslimin. SubhanAllah, ya ha'ula. Wa hal wahda illa ala al usul. And he has unity upon other than the fundamentals of the religion. SubhanAllah, wa bi hamdihi. Just teaching the people the religion. Teaching the people a religion in these cities, subhanAllah, wa bihamdihi here, Philadelphia, other cities. We have Salafi communities. You have thousands of people that are Muslims and no durus in the city except in the Salafis and in the Masajid of the Salafis. It's a ijram. That's a crime. That's a crime. 
But they want to unite the people upon fashion shows. They want to unite the people upon Islamic comedy. Unite the people upon voting. Unite the people upon kumbaya or whatever. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he informed us in this narration and many narrations that the fitna exposes the people. It shows the sadiq from the kathir, the person, the person with true resolve, from the person who was phony. From the person who was phony. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا كَانَ ذَلِكُمْ فَانْتَذِرُ دَجَّالَ مِنْ يَوْمِهِ وَمِنَ الْغَدِ When that is your condition, that you are one of two groups of people, Believers with no nifaq, munafiqun with no iman. What did Hassan al Basri rahimullah ta'ala he say? He said about nifaq that no one fears it except for the mu'min. And no one feels safe from it except for the munafiq. No one feels safe from it except for the munafiq. And no one fears it except for the believer. When you find yourself in that condition, and whether people are upon pure iman or pure nifaq, and alhamdulillah, it's not the condition today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spare us from al-fitan ma dhahara minha wa ma batan. When that becomes your condition, then anticipate the dajjal on that day or the very next. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said another narration about when they asked him about the fin of the Masih dajjal he said, he said, man naja mimma qablaha naja minha. Whoever is safe from the fitna before will be safe from it. Whoever is safe from the fitna before it will be safe from the fitna of the Masih al-Dajjal. You'll be safe from the fitna of the Masih al-Dajjal. So the person who wants to be safe from the fitna of the Antichrist, and he must hold fast to his fundamentals. He must have some fundamentals to begin with to hold fast to. <laughs> and he must have a desire, a zeal to learn his religion, to implement his religion. And he's some fundamentals, a methodology as regards his religion. And he must not be imma'ah. He must not be just a yes man. And he, يَقُولُ أَنَا مَعَ النَّاسِ إِنْ كَفَرُوا أَكْفُرُ And he, I am with the people. If they disbelieve, I disbelieve. If they believe, I believe. The person is a yes man. يَعْنِ يَمِيلُونَ مَعَ كُلِّ رِيحِ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ إِلَى رُقْنٍ وَثِيقٍ And he being blown by every wind. Every tempest that blows and knocks him off his square. A Shaykh Zayd ibn Muhammad bin Hadi al Madkhali, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he said, explaining these words of Imam Ahmad, Rahimullah Ta'ala, that the, from the fundamentals of the Sunnah is to believe in the coming of the Masih Dajjal, that he will emerge as a test, and that the word kafir will be written between his eyes. The word kafir will be written between his eyes and to believe in all of the ahadith that have come about it. Why did the Prophet wasallam warn against the fitna of the Masih Dajjal to such a great level and make it obligatory and make it obligatory for the Ummah of Muhammad wasallam in every salat to the point that some of the ulama they say a person's salat is invalid if he does not Seek refuge from four things as the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered. When he said that when one of you are in the Tashahud al Akhir, Faliyakul, then let him say, Faliyasta'id billahi min arba'ati umur. Let him seek refuge from Allah from four affairs. So, order from the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, making it obligatory. Some of the scholars they say a person's salat is invalid if he doesn't make the dua. His salat is invalid if he doesn't make the dua. Seeking refuge from Allah wa ta'ala from the finna of the adab al-qabr, from the punishment of the grave, and the finna of the masih al-dajjal, and the finna of the hellfire, and the finna of life and death, and the finna of life and death. Any he, he fitna meaning, any fitna jumlatan wa tafsil, and all fitna. So the Prophet wasallam he instructed every Muslim from his time to the Yawm al Qiyamah to do this. Despite the fact that very few of the Ummah will actually encounter the Masih al Dajjal. Shaykh Sa'di rahimullah ta'ala, he said in his, in his Risala about the fitna of the Masih al Dajjal, he said, May Allah have mercy upon him. He said that because the fitna of the Masih al Dajjal 
is the fitna of every type of abatil al mumawah al muzayyan al muayyad ah bil mukhtara'at any every type of falsehood that is beautified to the people that is beautified to the people and made fair seeming and that applies to every time right he said especially those fitna any of those fitan those abatil those matters of falsehood that are supported by the shayateen with khawariq al ada with supernatural affairs with supernatural affairs huh like the mutasawwifa in the past and who used to do miracles and one of them would see any the sufi sheikh he will be in mecca and the sufi sheikh is in baghdad and he was seen flying in the air above arafa he was seen flying in the air above arafa and he was start to make dua to him and what is he making dua to he's calling upon a devil and he has sheikh al-islam ibn al-taymi rahimullah ta'ala he mentioned that it is agreed upon by Ahl Sunnah that the jinn in their normal form that they are created upon are not possible for mankind to see. But they are able to be seen when they make a tashkil, when they take a different shakal, when they take a different form, when they shape shift, take the form of an animal or a human being or so on and so forth. They are possible to be seen. They are possible to be seen. And he is so, and he Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Taymi rahimahullah ta'ala, when he mentioned the believers in wahdat al-wujud and so on and so forth, and he that Allah is one with the creation and can become incarnate in certain any human beings and so on and so forth, that they are one with Allah, directly connected to Allah, and calling upon them is the same as calling upon Allah in these sorts of affairs. He said, refuting Ibn Tas'een, he said, there is no doubt that the likes of these people at the emergence of the Dajjal will be from his followers. And so the people of falsehood, and in every time, and he have had certain things, and he that are supernatural, Shaykh Asadi rahimullah ta'ala, he said, and I don't believe that it is far-fetched to say that what the Masih Dajjal comes with, that looks to be like miracles and from the people, supernatural feats to the people, that, that they will be made possible with modern-day technology. That they will be made possible with modern day technology, he said, and Allah knows best. He said, and Allah knows best. And he mentioned a couple of narrations. And he where the Prophet وسلم, he said that he will come with this and that, and that which appears to the eyes of the people. And that which appears to the eyes of the people. Some years ago, about three years ago, in the desert of Abu Dhabi, they had a machine that they invented that created 35 rainstorms in the desert of Abu Dhabi. It caused 35 rainstorms, it caused the sand particles and it to gather in such a way that they made it rain in the desert. 35 different storms. They brought the information to a Sheikh Salih Fawzani, he said, La ashuk. He said, I have no doubt. And mithla hadhihi al-umur min mumahidat fitnat al-masih al-dajjal. That the likes of these affairs are the precursors of the fitna of the Masih al-Dajjal. So the point is that any, any type of bottle, any that is beautified to the eyes of the people with that which is supernatural, or that which any, is any unnormal, abnormal, and so on and so forth, that causes the people to gravitate towards falsehood, it is from the jints. He said, and this is what a person, he said, it is of the type of fitna of the fitna of the Masih al-Dajjal. It is of the type of the fitna of the fitna of the Masih al-Dajjal. Now the point is a narration with Ahmed and others. It was reported with a couple of different wordings. One of it says, مَا مِنْ فِتْنَ مُنْذُ خَلَقَ اللَّهِ There has not been a fitna, any, since Allah, مُنْذُ خَلَقَ اللَّهُ Adam. Yani since Allah created Adam illa sunni'at li fitnat al Masih al-Dajjal except that it was designed to lead to the fitna of the Masih al-Dajjal except that it was designed to lead to the fitna of the Masih al-Dajjal for this reason the Prophet Sallallahu said the person who is safe from what is before will be saved from it will be saved from it may Allah protect I and you 
and our families and our children from it. I remember Abu Ways, rahimahullah ta'ala, years ago we were discussing, when he was still with us in Ohio, late one night, we were discussing the hadith of Abdullah bin Umar about the khawaj, and how any of the Dajjal will emerge amongst the khawaj. The hadith of Abdullah bin Umar, when he said, I heard the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Kullama kharaja qarnun quti' Every time a generation of them rises up, they will be cut off by Allah ta'ala. Until the Dajjal uh, emerges amongst a large army from the Khawaj. Until the Dajjal emerges amongst a large army from the Khawaj. Allahu Akbar. Abu Ways rahimullah ta'ala, he said, and he had his stepchildren with him, he said, can you imagine that perhaps in our lifetime or in their lifetime, it is possible that the Masih Dajjal may emerge. In the time of the Prophet wasallam, the companions were afraid that he would emerge during their lives. And the tabi'een that used to come to some of the companions, I believe it was Abdullah ibn Busr. They came to Abdullah ibn Busr and they asked him about the fitna of the Dajjal and he was from the last of the companions to die. And he said, لَوْ خَرَجَ فِيكُمْ He said, if he was to emerge amongst you, لَرَمَاهُ سُبْيَانُكُمْ بِالْقَرَفِ he said that if he was to emerge amongst you, he said, then your children would throw hard clay at him. They would, they would stone the Dajjal and chase him away. <laughs> he said, وَلَكَنْ يَخْرُجُ الدَّجَّالِ فِي خِفَّةٍ مِنَ الدِّينِ وَسُوعِ ذَاتِ الْبَيْنِ He said, but the, Dajjal, but the Dajjal will emerge in a time where the religion will be weak on the earth and the Muslims will have hatred and animosity for one another. And the Muslims will have hatred and animosity towards one another. Their hearts being separate, separated by shubuhat and shahawat and, these likes, and the likes of these affairs. Our Shaykh Zayd ibn Muhammad and Madkhali. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yashfiyahu shafa and ta'aman. To cure him with a complete cure. And he's a Shaykh and he's recovering from a heart attack. His heart stopped four times today. Shaykh Zayd al Madkhali, his heart stopped four times today. May Allah cure him. Shaykh is in his late 60s and he is from the alam of the Sunnah. As Umar said, the death of a scholar is a, tra- is a tragedy in Islam that cannot be repaired or mended by anything to the day of judgment. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve him and to safeguard him. Shaykh, he says here in his explanation, these words of Imam Ahmed, he said, Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jama'ah, they believe in the emergence of the Masih al-Dajjal in the end of times, that it is a reality, and that it is firmly established with authentic texts that are pure from defects and imperfections and weaknesses to the Prophet sallallahu He said, even if it is rejected by some of the people of innovation and misguidance, he says, so the Dajjal will emerge and there is nothing that will stop that. The Dajjal will emerge la mahala. And there is nothing that can prevent that. He said, and he will go over the face of the earth and cover over the face of the earth except for Mecca and Medina. For verily upon Mecca and Medina are malaika tatruduhu. And that will repel the Masih Dajjal and those that are with him from the Yahud and from the people of innovation and dalal like the Khawarij. And the Salat they used to say, as was said by Ayub al-Sakhtiyani, أهل البدع كلهم خوارج افترقوا في الاسم واجتمعوا على السيف. Now all of أهل البدع are خوارج. They have different names, but they all agree about shedding the blood of the Muslims who disagree with them, calling them kufar for disagreeing with their innovations. He said that he will be repelled as well as those that are with him from the Yahud and the people of Bid'ah and Dalala, from the خوارج and other than them. You'll be repelled by the Malaika. فَلَا يَدْخُلُ مَكَّةَ وَلَا يَدْخُلُ الْمَدِينَةَ You will not enter Mecca nor Medina. وَتَرْتَجِفُ الْمَدِينَةَ بِأَهْلِهَا Medina will shake with an earthquake and the people of Medina will be shaken. فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا مَنْ كَانَ خَبِيثًا فَيَتَّبِعُ الدَّجَّالِ And those that were filthy in nature will emerge and exit from Al-Medina and follow the Dajjal. وَكَمَا وَرَدَ فِي النُّصُوصِ الْكَثِيرَةِ 
وصفه بأنه عور العين اليمنى ومكتوب بين عينيه الكاف والفاء وراء he said and it has been mentioned exactly what he looks like in a number of authentic texts that he will be أعور العين اليمنى and there are about eight different narrations telling us just about the eye of the Dajjal what it will look like and another one mentions what his other eye will look like and he a hideous man and he of one eye that is sunk in another eye that will look like a protruding grape and have kafir written upon his forehead Allah tabarakah wa ta'ala is the ulama that he said Allah tabarakah wa ta'ala ayyada anbiya'ah wa rusulah bil jamal al batin al zahir yani he aided his prophets and his messengers with having a beautiful appearance when the nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to send messengers to call the people of the earth to islam and the kings of the earth to islam he would send the best looking of the people he sent dihya al kalbi dihya al kalbi was a man that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said and that when Jibreel took human form, he resembled Dihya al-Kalbi. He was sent the best looking of the companions to give da'wah. And because people are, not, uh, are naturally attracted to and he, a good appearance. And they are munaffar. And he, they are run away, grossed out, weirded out by somebody with a hideous appearance. The Dajjal, and he will be an enormous person. His body will be enormous. And he almost like he, obese like. And he will have one eye that is sunken. And another eye that looks like a protruding grape. And the word kafir written upon his forehead. And his hair in one narration. And he will look like tangled branches. And the people will follow him. So you have kafir written upon his forehead and it will be written by and it will be able to be read by every believer whether he can read or not whether he can read or not he will be able to read the word kafir upon his forehead he said why arifu and he will know that he is a dajjal every believer the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said idha sami'a ahadukum bid dajjali falyan'a anhu Whoever he hears, if one of you hears about the Dajjal, let him get as far away from him as possible. And Mubarak Puri, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said this is a general principle with the people of Batin. And it applies to the people of innovation. If you hear an innovator is coming, run. Sabu Wais, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, put your thobe in your mouth and get to running. Put your thobe in your mouth and get to running. A real life innovator, Hizbi, calling the people of Dalala beautifying falsehood by twisting the necks of the text using the Quran and the Sunnah fi ghayri mahallihima where they are not applicable and in a way that was not meant by Allah his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to mislead the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Dajjal he will come and some people they will have husnul dhan about themselves and they will go to him and they went in the following it is upon the person to get as far away from every type of fitna as possible. And this is something that is very important for American people. Because America, the United States of America, is a country that the culture of it is built upon controversy. People love controversy. They're raised upon controversy. And either entertainment is controversial. 
Their news is controversial. Their conversations are controversial. They love controversy. American people like controversy. They like controversy. They thrive upon controversy. They want to read about and hear about every day something negative and depressing. And we see from some of our brothers, Wallahu al musta'an, that instead of looking for the tayyib and the khair, and they look for every type of saqta, every type of opening, every type of slip, every type of anything to be able to have something to be upset about. Because it's just not right unless something is wrong. It's just not right unless something is wrong with them. The nature of the believer is that when the believer observes fitna, he sees fitna, he gets as far away from fitna as possible. He doesn't involve himself in fitna. He doesn't involve himself in fitna. He doesn't run towards fitna. He doesn't look for fitna. He doesn't invent fitna. He doesn't create fitna. But the believer, from his characteristics, he gets as far away from fitna as possible. He gets as far away from fitna as possible. He said, It is from the affairs that this nation will be tested with, and his emergence is a sign from the signs, from the major signs of the hour. He will remain in the earth for 40 days. One day will be the length of a year. One day will be like a month. One day will be like a week. And the rest of his days will be like these days of ours. Will be like these days of ours. He said, As has been authentic reported from the Prophet He said, And they will occur at his hands, that which is authentic reported of the Musus, that he will have a paradise and a fire with him and a jannah and a fire not the jannah and not the fire with him and that his jannah will be fire and that his fire will be the jannah and he the person that is thrown into the fire they will be spared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will be spared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Messiah the Jala one narration and he will cause the shayateen the authentic narration that he will cause the shayateen to take the form of your dead parents. And they will say, O son of mine, O daughter of mine, this is your Lord, so worship him. You can begin to imagine what that would be like. If your parents were to be deceased, if they were to die, and some devils took the form, took human form, and they said, O my son, Oh my son, this is your Lord. Follow him, worship him. Allahu Akbar. He said, so he will have a paradise and a fire. And he will be able to, and he will kill a person and bring him back to life. And those that follow him will have a comfortable life for the time that he is upon the earth, which is a very short period of time. And mutabaati saru fi jadab or fi jadabi. He said, and the one who refuses to follow him will find himself in a state of famine. And he no food, no drink, no water. Wahabihi min al ibtilaat. And this is from the great afflictions. As Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala he said, Liyabluakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. And Allah has created you, created life and death, in order to test you which of you are best in action. Wa ila fuwa adu Allah. Dajjalun ala ismihi a mukhalat mulabbas a mulabbis mumawih hatta takuni hayatuhu bi katlihi wa katli man ma'ahu id yanzilu isa ibn maryam ila dunya fayakturu dajjal wa junudahu min al yahud wal khawarij. He said, But he is the enemy of Allah, he is the dajjal, and his name means the mukhalat, the one who will confuse the people, the mulabbis, the one who will pull the wool over their eyes, the mumawih. The one who will fall and trick them and booze them until his demise and his end will be that he is killed. And those that are with him will be killed. When Isa ibn Maryam returns to the dunya at the Manaratul Bayda, at the masjid at the easternmost part of Damascus. Al Manaratul Bayda, and there will be a white manara 
and he would descend at that place with his hand upon the shoulders of malaika and any kafir that smells his fragrance will die he has been in the jannah and he is mahroom for the kufar to smell the jannah so Isa ibn Maryam all this time he will and he come to a nation awwaluha Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the beginning of it was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the end of it will be Isa ibn Maryam judging by the sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he will kill the Masih al-Dajjal he will kill the Masih al-Dajjal in the army with Isa ibn Maryam he will kill those that are with the Masih al-Dajjal from the Jews and the Khawarij from the Jews and the Khawarij فالمقصود so the point is that from the fundamentals of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a is to believe in the khuruj of the Dajjal the narration I believe is in the Sunan of Ibn Majah where they said كُنَّا نُعَلَّمْ أو كُنَّا نُعَلِّمُ سُبْيَانَنَا قِصَّةِ الْمَسِيحَ الدَّجَّالِ وَحُمْ فِي كُتَّابِ and we used to teach our children the story of the Masih al-Dajjal while they were in the Kuttab Kuttab are the schools yani where the children go to learn how to read and write they learn the abjadiyat of how to recite the Quran and so on and so forth. The children are four, five, six years old. They used to teach and detail their children the story of the Masih al Dajjal and the time of the companions and the Tabi'een and the time of the Salaf al Salihin. So, this is something that we should know the details about. And we should teach it to our children and derive the benefits that are learned from the story. Derive the benefits that are learned from the story. Because the person who is saved from his fitna. Who is saved from the fitna that comes before his fitna that leads to his fitna will be saved from his fitna. He says, So the point is that from the fundamentals of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah is to believe in the emergence of the Dajjal, and whoever rejects the emergence of the Dajjal from the people of innovation and Dalan for inna in karahum biduni ilm. He said, And they have rejected it because they are ignorant. He said, As for the people of Sunnah. Wal Jama'ah, yani they have no basis of knowledge to reject his emergence. As for the people of Sunnah and Al Jama'ah, then they have affirmed that he will emerge bi almin talaqawhu min al Sadiq al Masduq because of knowledge that has been received from al Sadiq al Masduq. And the, the hadith, the, the hadith are many of the Masih al Dajjal. The scholars collected entire books, just the narrations about the Masih al Dajjal. You can literally collect and there are some books that have been collected and he in two or three hundred pages nothing but narrations about the Masih al-Dajjal nothing but narrations about the Masih al-Dajjal everything from his appearance to his fitna what he will look like and we have with us and he translated the book of a Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala and the narration of Abi Umam al-Bahili radiallahu anhu wa aradahu the long narration about the coming of the Masih al-Dajjal and the fitna before and so on and so forth he said <clears throat> and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he ordered us to seek refuge from the Masih al-Dajjal when we make the salat saying that when one of you makes the tashahud then let him seek refuge with Allah from four things let him say oh Allah I seek refuge from the punishment of the hellfire from the punishment of the grave from the fitna of life and death and from the sharr from the evil of the fitna of the Masih al-Dajjal is reported by Imam Muslim in Kitab al-Masajid we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm upon the sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon the fundamentals of this belief and that it has some type of reflection and it has a great impact upon our statements and our actions and that we say what we mean and mean what we say and that he causes us to be sincere upon this way until we meet him subhanahu wa ta'ala wa huwa anna raad wa he is pleased with us and we encourage our brothers alhamdulillah you see the mashaykh and the ulama are getting old the shaykh Zaid is from the younger of the outer mashaykh he is from the younger of the outer mashaykh I believe he is around 68 years old now 68 years old now shaykh Rabian is, is in his late 70s the shaykh Fawzan is in his late 70s the shaykh Luhaydan is in his uh, uh, Shaykh Fawzan is in his 80s, in his early 80s. And like this, many of the Mashaykh yani, are in the yani, beginning of their 80s. And we lost a couple of years ago our Shaykh Abdullah Al Ghudayan, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. And our Shaykh uh, Muhammad Al Banna, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, a few years ago. And yani, the Shaykh was over 100 years old when he passed. May Allah have mercy upon him. And the scholars, the likes of Shaykh Ahmad Al Najmi, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. 
yani, a person who has the ability, who has the means. Alhamdulillah, there's a lot of things you could do with your money. There's a lot of things you could do with your tax refund. Alhamdulillah, it's a time of year where people are visiting the Mashaykh. We have the opportunity next week, inshallah, to be with the Mashaykh. And some of the people, many people from this community are going, alhamdulillah, to sit with the ulama and to take advices from the ulama and to see them and to benefit from them before they pass. Before they pass. And in, without a doubt, there will be money that is well spent. There will be money that is well spent to go visit the house of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, and to pray in the masjid of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to sit in the classes in the masjid of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and visit the ulama al-kibar in their homes. The senior scholars in our homes that have been helping us direct the affairs of da'wah and protect our communities from various fitan over the course of the last 15 plus years in America. From the favors of Allah wa ta'ala upon us, we encourage your brothers, and he, that, alhamdulillah, when you hear that your brothers are visiting the mashaykh, if you have the financial means, the brothers are going in May. I don't know if they still have slots open. Brothers from Philadelphia, they're going in May. We went last year with them. Alhamdulillah, you have... Salafis from places that you didn't, I don't even know where they're at. And he, in the homes of the Mashaykh, and this person he's from the Maldives, this person he's from and he, India, this person he's from Bangladesh. And you see the people they come from the east and the west to the homes of the ulama, to the homes of the ulama, loving the scholars, connecting any the hearts of the Salafis from the east to the west as a Sheikh Rabia. He said to us in his home last year, he said, Allah, the Salafi, and he, when he he is pleased by that which pleases his brother. And he is troubled by that which troubles his brother. Even if he is in the farthest reaches of Japan or America. And he hears that his brothers are going through something. And the Muslims in general, it troubles him. And he hears that the people who are calling to the Sunnah and calling to the way of the Salaf, and that they are being tested in their da'wah in particular. And his heart is with them. They are like the heart of one man. And inshallah, we enter the Jannah like that. As the Prophet wasallam, he mentioned about the first group that will enter the Jannah. Not that we have expectations to be from that first group. May Allah just make us enter the Jannah without any dharra'i mudirra wa la fitnati mudilla. And he, however, the Prophet وسلم, he said hey, that the first group to enter the Jannah from my nation, they will enter the Jannah qalbuhum ala qalbi rajulin wahid. And they will have the heart of a single man. They will enter the Jannah all together at one time. The first of them, that they will, and the first of them and the last of them will enter the Jannah in one single moment. Those 70,000. I have come in the hadith of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and with that 70,000 it will be thalatha thalatha hathiyat and there will be three handfuls of people that are taken by Allah tabarak wa ta'ala Allah tabarak wa ta'ala with his hand will, will place people in the jannah three handfuls of authentic hadith and he, with that 70,000 and he, there will be another 70,000 another 70,000 another 70,000 and like this they will enter the Jannah upon the heart of one man. Just as in the dunya they were uh, upon the heart of one man. Abu al-Mudhaffar al-Sama'ani rahimullah ta'ala He said, and that which will show you the ahl sunnah wal jama'ah upon the haqq and that they are the wasat bain al-firaq and they are upon the middle course of all the groups and upon the correct path. He said, is that despite tabayuni amsarihim wa buldanihim wa وعصارهم, despite the distance of their lands that they lived hundreds of miles apart thousands of miles apart from one another hundreds of years apart from one another when they speak about the affairs of the religion it is like they are speaking as they are speaking with one single tongue from the heart of a single man the ulama of ahl sunnati wal jama'a qadiman wa haditha from the past and the present and they speak about the fundamentals of the religion, those things that there are no two ways about, that there is no khilaf and sa'ir, there is no permissible differing about in the affairs of religion, it's like they are speaking with one single tongue from the heart of one single person. It's got Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He to make us 
any of those people that the Prophet وسلم, he said and the companions they said that they had not received glad tidings after Islam anything that caused him to be happier than when the Prophet وسلم, he said Al ma'a man ahab. a man will be with those that he loves in the hereafter he will be with those that he loves they came to the Prophet وسلم, they said he said, a rajul yuhibu qawmin wa lama yalhaqu bihim. He said, a man, he loves the people, but he never expects to ever catch up to them. He loved the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You love the companions. You love the ulama. You love the salaf salih. And you love uh, the people of sunnah in every generation and so on and so forth. He said, a man loves the people. Let me yalhaqu bihim. And he, and he can't expect to ever catch up to them. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, a man will be with those that he loves. As Ibn Abdul Barr, he said, Kun aliman, wa in la tasati, fa kun mutaaliman, wa in la tasati, fa ahib huma, wa la tubrid huma. He said, Be a scholar. If you can't be a scholar, be a student of knowledge. He said, If you can't be a student of knowledge, then love them and don't hate them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq, hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam, wa barak ala nabi Muhammad, wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam. The person being, in one narration, says a sort of kahf in entirety. Another says the first ten ayat. It's better for the person to memorize all sort of kahf if they can. Right? But the purpose of sort of kahf, you look at those ten verses. What are those ten verses about? What are they about? Think about it in your head. What are those verses about? Uh, one, the religion is straight. There's no, crooked in, there's no crookedness in it. Right? Religion is straight. The only way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Islam. That by itself is enough to protect a person from the fitna of the Messiah had the jaw. That a person has iman and jaz and yaqeen about that. Right? That Allah wa ta'ala has not taken a son. Right? A horrible statement has emerged from their mouths. Right? And then what? The beginning of Ashab al Kahf. Yani have you heard about the Ashab al Kahf and like this, right? Who are the Ashab al Kahf? They were any righteous youth upon Iman who Azalu Qawmahum. Yani they separated themselves, they ran away from the fitna. They pulled themselves, they segregated themselves from the fitna. Right? They separated themselves from evil. They got as far away from fitna as possible. So these are the general principles that are found in these verses in Surah Al Kahf. Right? It's not just a person memorizing them and not knowing their meanings and contemplating upon them, but if the Dajjal the emerges, a person is alive, reciting these verses, contemplating upon their meanings, is enough to protect him from the fitna of the Dajjal. You said twofold. So it would be protected. Said he will be protected. He will be protected. Otherwise, the Dajjal will be uh, the Dajjal will be killed by Isa ibn Maryam, right? Be killed by Isa ibn Maryam, right? And there will be in general, Ali and there will be in general any people who are tested. And we know that there will be a young man who will be tested, so on and so forth. And he will say, "And do you know who I am?" And he will say. أنت المسيح الدجال الذي أخبرنا عنه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا المسيح الدجال that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم informed us about. The scholars have mentioned about ten or fifteen different things that I mentioned in the nusus and the text in general that protect a person from the Messiah الدجال. All of them going back to a person having knowledge, a person having iman, a person making istiada, those sorts of things. Mm-hmm. 
He said, how do we combine between the hadith of Tamim al-Dari and the statement of uh, Umar? For Umar, he said uh, that he swore by Allah. I don't remember any Adun any kana obey ibn Ka'ab. No. They swore by Allah. Some of the companions, a number of the companions, it was reported from a number of the companions that they swore by Allah that Ibn Sayyad was the Masih al Dajjal. They thought he was the Dajjal, right? And one narration, uh, after, after he was questioned, after he was questioned by one of the companions, after he was questioned by one of the companions, he turned away and he said, I swear by Allah, I know who his mother, his father is. I don't know where he's at right now. <laughs> Some of them, they ask a question. They say, is, is Ibn, Ibn Sayyad, is he counted amongst the Sahaba? We say, Qat'an la. Absolutely not. He is not counted amongst the Sahaba. Ibn Sayyad is not counted amongst the Sahaba. He was a young boy. He was a child at the time when Omar wanted to decapitate him. Right? And because he was at a... They say the kahin, there's two different types of kahin, right? The one that, and he can predict things by looking at the stars and so on and so forth. And the jinn, they come to him and they tell him certain things. Another type of kahin, he tries to read the mind of a person. He tries to read the mind of a person. So, the Prophet said, I'm hiding something from you. And the Prophet said, he was singing about sorts of dukhan. And he said, a dukh, a dukh. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, He said, may you be humiliated, you never go beyond your level. Right? You never go beyond your level. And he thought that he was a prophet. Ibn Sayyad, he thought that he was receiving revelation, he was receiving, and he was hearing voices from the devils and the shayateen from an early age. From an early age. And he was a Yahudi. He was a Yahudi. And so some of the companions, due to what they saw from him, they thought that. So Ibn Sayyad, he asked one of the companions, he said, didn't the Prophet Sallallahu inform that he won't enter Mecca and Medina? And he said, and I'm leaving Medina to go to Mecca for Umar Hajj, like this. He was in Ihram, traveling, he was leaving Medina to go to Mecca. He said, and didn't he inform that he won't have any children? He said, and don't I have like wives and children and like this and that? He asked him a number of things. He said, he asked him a number of things. And then he said when he was convinced, when the companion who reported the hadith said when he was convinced that he wasn't the Dajjal, he said, he said, he said, I'm an inni a'alamu abahu wa umma. He said, I know who his mother and his father is, are, wa ain't who al and where he is right now. <laughs> he turned out, he was, he was riding away from him, and he said this statement. And he said this statement. And, he, and then the hadith of Tamim al-Dari, and, he, and Tamim al-Dari, and he was from any of those who accepted Islam later on. He accepted Islam later on, towards the end of the life of the Prophet wasallam. So some of the scholars, they say it's possible that when some of the companions said this, and he, they didn't know what transpired with Tamim al-Dari, right? That's one way that you could look at it, where the Prophet wasallam. Tamim al-Dari came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa long narration. They were on an island. The ship was lost at sea. And they washed up on an island. And they saw a creature. They couldn't tell his front and his back. It was a hairy creature covered with hair. They couldn't tell his front and his back. They said, oh creature, who are you? They said, the creature said, I am the Jasasa. He said, oh, what is that Jasasa? He said, go ask the man in that monastery. And they went and they saw a man. And he had iron collars from his neck to his wrist. It was like a solid iron collar from his wrist to his neck. And they asked a number of questions about the Prophet. And he was chained to the wall. And they asked a number of questions about the Prophet and some other affairs. And he, and he informed them that he was the Messiah and so on and so forth. Saying that he was Isa ibn Maryam and like this. right? And they told the Prophet Tamim al he told the Prophet what transpired. And the Prophet ﷺ, he exhibited happiness, and he, that, and he, somebody had affirmed what he had been saying about the existence of the Dajjal, and so on and so forth. And he saw what could be said is a number of things. He said, one, Ibn al-Sayyad, and he was from the tribes of the Yahud, and he, that the Prophet ﷺ, and he had a peace treaty with when he first entered al-Medina. 
right? When he first entered Al Madinah, he had a peace treaty with those people, right? And any the hadith, the hadith of Taymiyyah Yadari, what occurred happened later on. It happened later on. So when some of the companions swore by Allah, so on and so forth, that's one thing that could be said for those that had that type of certainty that they thought he was a the the jail before that occurred. And what else could be said is that it was possible that some of them didn't know what transpired from the story of Tamim Adari and so on and so forth. That's possible. And he folka kuli the almin alim. Above everyone now just somebody who knows something they don't know. Do we know everything that the Prophet Sallallahu said about every affair? Likewise, some of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu even if they were on a high level of knowledge, there are some things they didn't know that the Prophet Sallallahu may have said. It's very possible. And in not all of the companions were with the Prophet Sallallahu every day of his life, every moment of the day. Some of them say, saw things from him in private. Some of them saw things in, and, he, as, and he won the food when the delegations would come in. And delegations of tribes and so on and so forth would come in. They would have private sittings with the Prophet Sallallahu Things that transpired in that may have been observed by some people that wasn't observed by other people. Right? So any of these sort of affairs, Alhamdulillah, there's no real action connected to them. And we accept them as they came and we know that there is no istirab, that there is no contradiction between them. That there is no contradiction between them. Hada Allahu Alam Sallallahu Wasallam Mubarak Ala Nabi Muhammad. You good?